Hi folks, my name is Girish Pally, the host for Back to Basics, another Back to Basics for another week for season three. Today we're going to speak with Jim Jitney and we're going to find out what does it take when it comes to the new world that we're living in right now after the pandemic has happened. A lot of things have changed. What do we need to do to develop and to implement new items when it comes to the new business world? What is it called? Well, there's a book that we're going to go and talk about today, and it's called Strategize Realization. And that book will explain most of the stuff. But then today we're going to go and get to know him better about his book and what it's all about. So let's get on to Back to Basics and let's uh, connect with him and get to know him better about Jim. So let's talk to him. <music> Hi folks, my name is Girish Pally. As I said on the intro, today we're going to go and speak with Jim and we're going to go and find out about, as I said on the intro, things have changed over the years, but things have really changed right after the pandemic also. Now the thought process is how to change that mindset to the new thought process. And that's where Jim comes in and that's where his book comes in. So we're going to go and talk to him, chit chat who he is, what he is, and why he is. Jim, how are you? Thanks for coming to uh, Back to Basics. I'm doing great, great, Grish. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, honor is definitely all mine. But Jim, before we start the, the whole topic about today's topic, uh, what does Back to Basic uh, mean to you? <clears throat> so Back to Basic basically means that we are taking the things that we normally do the things that we do well and accelerating the performance of those things rather than attempting to try and introduce some new fancy schmancy methodology or model or something that people are not going to understand or it's going to take a significant amount of training and discussion and require a lot of buy-in for people to change the way they are doing things so back to basics is, I know what I do. Let's just do it a lot better. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again, Jim. And uh, thanks again for coming to the small podcast that I have to support me here. Jim, let me ask you this. A after all the years that we have known the way the business runs and the, ba the way the business is going, good or bad, I mean, that's everyone's scenario. But now we have to remodelize and re-energize with a different, different thought process. Where, where do we start? I mean, it seems like we just have to like disconnect and then reconnect again and start fresh. Yeah. So let me think about that for a second, because I don't know that it is so much starting again as it is rethinking what you already do. Okay. Now, let, let me share with you an example. So prior to the pandemic, we all worked inside of offices. And we were able to continuously collaborate, meet with people. I could walk down the hallway to my boss or to one of my peers or even my peer's boss and have a conversation about something that's going on, about something that needed to be done. I knew the people personally. I knew their smiles. I knew their their insights. In today's in today's world, the large percentage of the people inside of businesses are remote. For the most part, many of them will never meet each other. I can tell you in my consulting practice, it's been over the last two years, there have been projects where I have never personally met the people that I worked with. And so we have to we have to learn how to work together remotely and we don't have the one-on-one -on -one, the body language the look in the eye the smile the frown we we don't have the ability to significantly add that to our repertoire of things that uh, and how we behave how we respond how we hear okay mm. So one of the, so what do we have left? 
the basic things we have left are the commitments that we make to each other about getting things done, mm. about following up on something, about being accountable to something, about uh, giving, being able to give feedback remotely. Mm. And so in Strategy Realize, The Business Hierarchy of Needs, my new book, we're, we talk about the idea of having everyone actively involved in the development and implementation of strategy and everyone being able to talk about their role in the implementation of strategy. Mm -hmm. And because they're accountable, they have the ability to be able to demonstrate to each one of us what they've gotten done relative to their role mm -hmm. in implementing strategy. But Jim, I, I want to go and ask you a quick question, if you don't mind. Uh, we like to interact with people. We like to network with people. But it seems like when we get on a phone call today, nowadays, we, we get on the remote and that's just how it is, right? But nobody really turns on the camera, the webcam. Is it because it's just not needed or communication is verbally and that's enough? I mean, is that the new way of thinking or do you think that it was always there we just never really thought about it till now. Well, I really don't know the answer to that question other than to say that it irritates me when I'm on the on a Zoom call with somebody and they don't show their picture. Hmm. Um, there are some people who are offended by it. There are some people who believe that the person on the other end didn't take the time to tidy up the area behind them or didn't take the time to address appropriately et cetera. So we're still working through all of those things. But at the end of the day, it's all about results. Hmm. It's all about, did we accomplish the things that we committed to our peers? Did we accomplish the things that we committed to our teams? Hmm. Did we accomplish the things that we committed to senior level management? Hmm. And so I think that ultimately ends up becoming the binding between all of us. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again. You know, how has the industries kind of changed uh, over the period of time during the the admin work that we do or maybe even the the planning phase? I mean, do you think that has kind of changed too? And the forecast forecasting has definitely changed for sure. But what are your thoughts on that? I mean, how do we how do we what are, what is the new process? What is the thought process for you? So the thought process for me is that, you know, when I was able to be face to face with everybody, I could ask a lot more detailed questions. I could spend a lot more time reviewing data and I could do it in groups. I could meet with teams of people. We can still do that via Zoom, right? Hmm. Um, but we have a more difficult time we have a more difficult time assessing someone's productivity and their contribution to the organization. You know, accountability to, to commitments of goals and objectives is something that's always been tough for leaders because they have many different things going on and many moving parts that they have to manage. And what's different for me is that I wanna make sure that when I work with a team, that everyone in the team understands and is aligned with and committed to us accomplishing some type of goal. Mm -hmm. And everyone has their part. And, and, and at the end of the day, if they really contribute and they really do their part and they deliver what they said they were going to on a specific date, on a specific time in an excellent fashion, and, I use the word excellent, but I want to be careful about that because what I really want is the deliverables to be what was committed, right? Mm. And so I'm going to call that excellence just for the sake of conversation. Then a lot of these other questions start to go by the wayside, mm. right? So if I'm in accounts receivable and you know we are working, all of us are working remotely, and our major objective is to keep accounts receivables under, let's pick a number, 45 days. Mm. And we're doing that and it's getting done. 
and I've measured e each accounts receivable person can demonstrate how they're contributing to us meeting that goal, then as a leader, I'm satisfied. I'm happy mm -hmm. with the result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, uh, Jim. Thank you again for that. Now, w when it comes to, I I'm going to be upfront about it. There's a lot of people who are seniors in, in the corporate world and has been there for years, right? And today you're going to go and knock on their door and saying, well, you need to buckle up your skill development and hire. So how do we motivate seniors? And no one's somebody, whoever it is, I, I do apologize, but how do we motivate them? How do we motivate the youngsters that you got to build up new skills? So I think that's a new change too, isn't it? So let's walk through the progression of the business hierarchy of needs for a moment to get to the answer to that question. Hmm. I, I'm a boom, baby boomer, what's called a baby boomer, right? Mm -hmm. And my kids are millennials. And we've got the Gen Z's and the Gen X's. And I read all the time mm -hmm. about what, you know, their particular needs are, right? But at the end of the day, we're human beings. Mm -hmm. And as professionals and as people, we want to be led. We want, we, we want people to share with us what the journey looks like. Mm. We want people to let us know we're going from what to what, by when, and this is how we're going to do it. And we want to be part of that decision-making process. We want to be part of developing the plans and programs that are going to make that journey successful. By understanding how we're part of a larger accomplishment inside the organization or inside the company, it's a lot easier for me to be motivated. Mm -hmm. If you come to me and tell me, go do something, and you don't tell me why, then it's, it's more difficult to motivate me than it is if you tell me, hey, we've got this most important goal which the business hierarchy of needs and the business strategy are built is built on. Here's a strategy that supports it. You're part of this strategy. And here are the tactics we need in order to accomplish it. And you're, this tactic is yours. Mm -hmm. And it, it consists of these things. It needs to be delivered by this time. And if you and I, if, I, if I'm speaking to you, having this conversation with you, and you're in alignment with that, and you're in agreement with the deliverable and the time frame, then the motivation, and I've committed to you to give you the resources and the support, and perhaps the training, maybe you need new training, maybe you need additional resources, maybe you need a team, and I've committed that to you, that's all part of this alignment and agreement thing, then the motivation is there. Mm -hmm. But, okay. but this is the motivation side of things. But then how about the, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. This is the motivation side of things, right? But then what about the, I'm not going to use the word laziness. I'm, I think I'm going to call it, don't feel like doing it type of thing. Because I've studied so much for so many years. Now I got to pick up a book or just go to YouTube and start learning more again. So how do we, how do we think that process now? Well, you know, a lot of times, uh, and I, my professional career is 45 years long and I've run large organizations. <clears throat> what I find is that most people aren't lazy. Hmm. Most people aren't supported. They aren't supported. P people who are oftentimes not able to deliver uh, on projects, and other goals and objectives are oftentimes, it's oftentimes a result of management leadership and not the individual. Now, there are going to be some people who just want to hide behind the weeds and who just are there for the ride. Hmm. But they're going to, you're going to identify them pretty quickly because if everybody in the organization has a set of goals and objectives that they're accountable to, then very quickly we're going to find the people who are routinely missing those goals and objectives with very objective data. It could be a performance metric, it could be a commitment date for project or whatever, 
But if I'm consistent with everybody across the organization on how they're going to be measured and how they're going to be accountable, then what's going to happen is those people who fit into that lazy category are going to opt out mm. because they won't be able to live up to the scrutiny of accountability. Mm. And that's the most difficult thing for leaders to do. <clears throat> and then inside the business hierarchy of needs, we create a structure where objectives and goals and objectives are cascaded down throughout the organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again. So it looks like the relearning has to be there. Uh, the, the relearning of training needs to be there. And I guess the networking with others needs to be there too. But then what else is there? I mean, is there another secret sauce that we need to understand the, the new thought process that we're getting into? So <clears throat> this is where we get to back to basics, right? Okay. So you call it a new thought process. I call it a basic business process. And us doing a better job of integrating all of the things that we do and focusing them on uh, the most important goal of the company. So perhaps one of the new thought processes is the most important goal of a company. Most company, most of us were taught that companies should have three to five strategies <clears throat> and, the, and people who are responsible for those strategies. But very seldom do we engage, fully engage people throughout the organization to be part of developing that strategy and implementing it. Mm. That's a basic skill set. Mm. <clears throat> That's a basic need inside the organization. So I think I, I think what it really boils down to, Garush, is that we need to <clears throat> we need to make sure that the leaders inside the company and their teams, and once again, are aligned and accountable to the goals and objectives, mm. that they understand the most important goal, that they're able to talk to anybody about their role in a in accomplishing that and are able to talk to anybody about their role in accomplishing that. Mm -hmm. But Jim, with all the stuff that we've talked about, how do we market ourselves as a brand new gym, a brand new gearish into the new world that we're getting into? <clears throat> so it's interesting, Girish. The uh, we don't have to. Okay. And here's the reason we don't have to. If and and this is uh, a part of an article that I wrote for consultants about around the business hierarchy of needs. Hmm. If I can demonstrate that what I'm doing supports business strategy and supports the most important goal, and the results of the work I do demonstrates how I've accomplished those things, then I get noticed inside the organization. Hmm. I, I, the, I get noticed because I get things done, hmm. because I meet my commitments to the organization, because I am truly focused on the, the company being strategically successful and, and meeting its most important goal. Hmm. The marketing takes care of itself. Hmm. And then, uh, th thank you again for that, because marketing is one thing that people, they realize that they might have to go on to LinkedIn or TikTok or Instagram to advertise themselves as a brand new person, a brand new, uh, I don't know, avatar uh, feel, right? If, if that, if I have to say that. So, but thank you again for explaining that. But what about the, the technology that keeps on changing over and over again? How do we how do we shift over to the new thought process of the technology now? Because people are not, there's a lot of people who are not tech savvy, but then there's a lot who are. So how do we explain that now to the, to the baby boomers and all the, the Gen X's, I guess. So um, there isn't, <clears throat> well, <laughs> I asked my wife the other day, what do we do in our life? It's not, directed or significantly reliant on technology. Hmm. 
Now, she identified a couple of things, but I said, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is managing our household, managing our business, turning the oven on and off, you know, refrigerators, um, paying our bills, managing bank accounts, doing transactions, credit cards, all of those, even, even our cars mm. are completely managed by technology. And we've all learned how to adapt to that. Mm. So while you suggested that not everyone's tech savvy, the reality is that we're much more tech savvy than we might like to admit to ourselves. Okay. Because there's nothing that we do today that isn't heavily dependent on technology. Exactly. Now, let's, let's move on to the business setting. What I find inside of businesses that we work on or businesses that we work with is that most companies don't leverage the technology investment that they've made. Hmm. I'll give you an example. So I consider myself a pretty good user of Excel. Okay. But I'll bet I only use 5% of Excel's capabilities. Of course. And I'll bet that when I'm doing models, modeling, there are other ways that I could do that, that would make it more robust and that would make it better. Hmm. I have no doubt in my mind. The, the, the issue is not that I'm not tech savvy. The issue is I haven't been provided the skill set to use it better. Hmm. So it's incumbent on leadership inside of a business to understand what the capabilities are of their technology backbone mm. and to leverage that backbone as much as possible. Mm. But they have to make sure that they've delivered the training and the skills to the people inside their organization. Mm. Because everyone today is on some form of Teams type software. They use emails, they use messengers, uh, messaging. They Everybody, they write rep their own reports. Every They do their own analysis. So mm. everybody has a relatively different levels of being tech savvy. Mm. Companies that are going to get much more, that are going to be much more successful are the ones who are going to take the investment that they've made and provide the skills to the people in their organization to use it better. And I even go as far in the book to, to suggest that companies should organize around their technology backbone instead of attempting to break their technology backbone into functional pieces mm. and just use it on the, um, and just use it for um, functional activities like finance or marketing or manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jim, thank you again, because uh, those are great nuggets, by the way, uh, because I, I am going through that same process, meaning me thinking about the new world that we're living in, about the, the business side of things, the marketing side of things, and the technology side of things. And I think I'm on the same wavelength as you are. So, Jim, thank you again for that. You know, we, we have... Go ahead, Jim. So, I, I might add one more thing. Sure. Uh, Tech savvy is an interesting thought. Uh, how good we become at utilization of technology has a lot to do with our own personal curiosity as well. That's right. I mean, I just heard something about last week about something called Chat G T uh, P T G P T, which is an artificial intelligence platform, and you can ask it to write a children's book, and it will. You can ask it to write a story for you and it will. So those that technology is changing all the time. So there are going to be people who are going to accelerate more quickly because of their technology, technical curiosity. Hmm. But what it really boils down to is to me as a leader in an organization, providing my people with the skills they need. Hmm in order to maximize the use of the technology I've made the investment in. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. And we can definitely debate about the chat GPT because, you know, honestly speaking, you take an example of, let's say, I don't know, uh, Stephen King writing a book using GPT. So 
Is it GPT actually writing the book or is it really Stephen King? So the essence of that author is kind of gone uh, when it comes to the writing part of just like what you explained. Uh, but I think the benefit from what I understand is I think the development side and the the automation side, I think it's kind of better when it comes to the GPT side. Do you agree with that or disagree with that? Yeah, and, and let me share with you how I use it. So when I go to write an article, I go to chat GPT and I ask it to write the article. Mm -hmm. And I only use appropriate pieces of it as food for thought. Of course. Right? Yeah. So, so it becomes a primer for me, not a crutch from which to write an article right, right. but it becomes a primer because it, it it's incredible uh at taking things and breaking it down logically and providing a very uh, understandable uh, approach to it and so you know it takes it helps it's similar to you and i having a conversation about an article on back to basics right, right. Right. where you and I are talking and you're providing me with some food for thought on what should, the art should be in the article and how it should be structured. But mm -hmm. in my mind, it's no different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jim, thank you again uh, for explaining uh, your uh, advantage when it comes to the GPT side of things, because there's a lot of people who have disadvantages and we can get to that debate later. Uh, yeah. But there's a new segment uh, that I've started for season three for Back to Basics is the rapid fire round. So there's some words and some sentences, whatever first thing comes out of your mind when I say those words or the sentences, you like to play that game? I think it'll be fun. Let's try it. Okay, awesome. So the first word is model. A framework, a framework which guides you through the process of doing something. Okay. Training. Uh, improving someone's skills so that they can accomplish a task more efficiently or with a better result. Okay. Network. Oh, there's a couple of different different approaches you could take to that, but I'm going to move it to the team side. So a network of people who have a gotten together and have agreed on accomplishing objective, obje an objective, a measurable objective, and working together to make that happen. Time. Never enough. Accountability. Doing what I said I was going to do when I said I was going to do it. Okay. And, 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 and most importantly, being willing to understand that I'm not going to be able to accomplish the objective and admit it and it, with sufficient time going to my boss or someone else and asking for help. Mm. That's a good point. Goal. The objective that I am I want to realize as a result of my work, the result that I want to realize as uh, because of my work. Gen Z. Gen, Gen Z. Um, the generation that's going to make sure that my social security continues to be available. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, baby boomers. Baby boomers. You know, baby boomers, a, a, a ton of knowledge and a ton of information, a ton of experience that everyone should attempt to take advantage of. Mm. Motivation. Those things that allow me to put the maximum effort in to accomplishing a goal or objective. Okay. Leaders. Uh, someone who provides me with the resources and the direction that I need in order to be able to accomplish a task, mm. either as an individual or as being part of a team. Mm. Relearn. Something we have to do constantly. 
unlearn? Something that we have to be willing to give up in recognition of the fact that there's a better way to do it. Mm. Oh, and oh, by the way, unlearning becomes much easier if I'm part of developing that new process or approach. Mm. We also call that change management. So, so in my, my opinion, if, if now that I've thought about it for a second, I could have just as easily have said change management in response to the word unlearn. Mm. That's a good point. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, basic business process. There are seven of them seven basic business processes that every business is going to live or die by. And we need to excel at every one of them. Hmm. Okay. Uh, technology. The set of, of systems and, and I'm going to put equipment in here, the collection of systems and equipment that makes it much easier for us to be able to accomplish a task. Hmm. Okay. And last two, Jim. Uh, a guy who's got 45 years of experience that he's more than happy to share with your listeners and others, which is why I love running my consulting practice and doing what I do. Hmm. And the last word is back to basics. Once again, that's that set of things that we have to do, that we, the, the set of things that we want to do, but keeping it as simple as possible. Hmm. Yeah, Jim, thank you. Thank you again. But before you leave today, do you have any last words to all my Back to Basic listeners and my viewers? And how is your journey on Back to Basics too on top of that? So this has been fun. I like the lightning round. Um, that's pretty interesting. I've never been asked to do that before. Okay. Uh, the, the other thing is, the other th thought that I'd like to leave everybody with is, imagine a rowing team of 10 rowers and each one of them rowing at a different cadence versus how quickly a boat might go if I have 10 rowers who are rowing in exactly the same cadence. Strategy realized the business hierarchy of needs is about leveraging, it is a methodology to allow everybody in an organization or on a team to be able to all row in the same direction and row at the same cadence and to understand what their role is in helping to get from point A to point B. Yeah, Jim, thank you. Thank you again for, for being here. And thank you again for supporting me uh, on, on Back to Basics. And, uh, you know, you and I are going to be connected even offline. And I like to pick your brain when it comes to these type of topics, because it seems like these topics are nonstop and we can just keep on talking about it to make our world better, whatever the better is. But whatever it is, I think we're going to make it better, isn't it? I'm, did I say better like four times? But you understand what I'm saying is I, I think the more and more we talk, I think the better the world is going to be. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I'll just leave you with one additional thought. Okay. There's one most important goal that each one of us should be part of. All right. From a business sense, it's the most important goal from the company. But in a church group or in a team of baseball players or in a cycling team, that idea of a most important goal and all of the things we need to do to accomplish it works extremely well in helping us attain it more quickly, more easily, and with less frustration. Yeah, yeah. Jim, uh, thank you. Thank you again for being on uh, Back to Basics and uh, we'll, uh, we'll stay in touch for sure. Thank you. You're welcome. It's been my pleasure. 
So guys, we spoke with Jim today and we talked about the basics of business, didn't we? And we talked about the goals. I mean, no matter what question I asked him, the answers were basically simple and basic, which is goals and how to modelize your business, how to modelize your attitude, your skills, your baby boomers, your Gen Zs. And that's what we all talked about. But there's one thing that we did agree on, that we need to make a better place and we need to learn and relearn all over again. And that's just how it is. And that's how life is. Guys, as usual, as always, there's a quote of the day from Back to Basics. And hopefully Jim will like this. A satisfied customer is the best business strategy for all, for all, off all. So guys, as usual, as always, what do we always say at the end of the episode? Everything in life goes back to basics. And that's what we did today. Guys, take care. God bless. And I will see you next time on Back to Basics. It was great for me, but more importantly, how was it for you? I think it's great. I think I had a, a great time. I can, you know, when I actually say I can talk about this topic over and over again is actually true uh, because it seems like it makes me think and relearn when it comes to these things, right? And, and I guess um, as employees uh, in the corporate world, we need to step up and ask the question that, uh, buddy, tell me what is your goal for me so then I can improve on my next step. Because otherwise, what's the difference between Jim 1 and Jim 2 who sits there just do nothing, you know? Hi hey guys, thank you again for tuning in to Back to Basics and listening to the the excellent uh, episode that we had today with our guest. You know, with your love and support, we do need you to at least rate our show, review our show, because it does make it stronger day by day, week by week, as I usually say on my episodes. And there are three things in this episode that it makes a hit for me, which is the content, the guest, and definitely the host. So guys, take care, God bless, and remember, everything in life goes back to basics, and that's what we did today, guys. Guys, take care, God bless, and see you next time on Back to Basics.